You know, when I was a little girl, I didn't really have a lot of girlfriends. Maybe I was too driven. Maybe I was too shy. Maybe I had too much testosterone. <laughs> but all, all my friends were guys because I didn't really like the way that they treated each other. And I knew that it just wasn't right. So having been in the mortgage industry for about 15 years, about 10 years ago, I met this lady. We did not hit it off when we first met. I have the distinct honor of introducing this lady to you this evening, and I'm very excited to have been asked, and I'm humbled to have been asked. I have a BFF who is unstoppable. I kind of think that I'm the gale to her Oprah. <laughs> and um, I had the opportunity to watch her transition and to be the sounding board, if you will, for her transition from mortgage executive to the amazing entrepreneur that she has become. During that time, I had a front row seat. Heck, sometimes I was even riding shotgun. When everybody was saying, you should do this, you should do this, I want you to do this first, this first, and she said, nope. I know exactly what I want. I know exactly where I'm going. I know exactly how I'm gonna get there. And I know exactly how long it's gonna take. And my goodness, look around this room today. Because my BFF, Buffy, Christine Beckwith, <laughs> has done an amazing job, and I would like to welcome her to the stage. closer to a cheeseburger right now. I'm so excited. <laughs> Counting down the hours. This is what it looks like to work on fumes. So thank you for coming. I'm so excited to be here tonight with all of you. And of course, I'm going to try to get through this whole performance without crying. Um, because it is something incredible to watch your vision come to life. And so I'm going to take you on a little short journey to explain the mission behind Women with Vision. So I'm gonna be honest, and like I always am, when I started 2020 Vision, I was given a recommendation to have a women's coaching division. And I decided I wasn't going to do that right away. The reason that I decided that is that I had been the manager for over 5,000 male loan originators and branch managers in 30 years. And I felt it was appropriate for me to open a gender neutral coaching company because that was my following. And that was being true to myself. And so I waited a full year. And I opened my doors and both men and women came to 2020. Today we are still more men than women, but we have the largest women's coaching division in America in the mortgage. And so by percentages, we are most certainly doing an incredible job. You know, as I came into what I thought this vision looked like, and we came up with our wonderful marketing uh, with Candy Zalkowski, and I'm gonna talk about Candy before I get off the stage. And we came up with Women with Vision, and of course it's taken on a life of its own. In doing that, I had to write a mission statement. What did it represent? And I found myself not ever having given an advocacy speech before in my career, 
not ever really having been on a stage where I would speak on behalf of just women. Because the truth is, I'm actually a tomboy, which you all know. <laughs> so I don't usually wear skirts. We already know that I wear a Harley, that's out, or ride a Harley, that's out. And so now I had to decide what the mission looked like. And the mission is this. I want women to have thriving businesses. I want, I want women to be seen as the best choice for promotions when they are the best choice. I want to be there if women decide that they need to fight for pay equality or against discrimination or sexual harassment. And the truth is, during my 30 years, I don't know that I was a great advocate for this. I'm gonna tell you that in 1989, I joined a pool of loan officers, and I was one of 21, and I was the only woman. A few years later, I would move to another company, and there were 187 loan officers, and I was the only female then. I would later become a branch manager that company would grow to 210 branch managers, and I was the only female branch manager. Later on, I became one of 14 district managers, and I was the first ever district manager in the history of this company. I would later become a regional vice president, which also, that position had never been held, and then I became the senior vice president of sales over the whole nation for H&R Block Mortgage with 1,200 people reporting to me. Yeah. And I took that as a distinct honor, but the truth was, gender had never played a role in my mind. I had just been the person I felt was the best choice for the job at the time. And so I was grateful to men who gave me those promotions because I want to say their names out loud. My first district manager position was promoted by Bill Kaiser and Ryan Kuby. My promotion to regional vice president was from Tim Owens. My promotion to senior vice president was from Rob Burnaby. Later on, I would be hired by Joe Penabianco, who's in the back room, the CEO of Annie Mac to help lead his national sales force. <laughs> which I did for 12 years, and I was grateful to do so. And Joe was the first person to sign a contract when I opened my doors at 2020. So you can see I got here because of men, and I worked for great men. So when I think about my advocacy voice, it has to be gender neutral for me. Women with vision is not about fighting for a piece of pie we don't deserve. It's about getting in the game and showing you all what we're made of. Yes. So, we're a serious business school. We work on everything financial forensics, business planning, marketing, and the whole gamut. And the women that you're about to celebrate tonight are the 2020 recipients and the most stunning example in the American banking and brokering industry that we have to offer. 72 incredible women who are thriving, thriving at their businesses. All right, I want to talk, and I don't have a clicker up here, Candy, uh, for the, uh, for the uh, slides. I know that I'm supposed to, I think. Jenna, didn't we just say that the clicker is the most annoying part of the presentation? I'm positive. I will start talking about it while we figure out where exactly it is. Um, so we, of course, have uh, dedicated ourselves to young women that are coming up and getting a head start and obviously helping them uh, get that start. And so uh, we're really excited to have, um, yep, it's not here. <laughs> 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 
We're really excited to have a wonderful woman. If we can pull the screen up back from back there, just go ahead and do it if you're able to do that. So one of the wonderful women that are on the cover of the magazines out in the uh, lobby area is a young woman uh, who, by the way, is listening right now virtually because we are live streaming across the nation to hundreds of people. So this show is live right now. Her and her father are watching. Her name is Olivia Lamper. And Olivia has an incredible story. She is the youngest woman with vision uh, in America. And she is an advocate for anorexia, overcoming anorexia herself. And 2020 Vision has had the distinct honor of sponsoring her in the Miss Teen USA competition as she faces her fears and overcoming those fears. I had the honor to be in the audience as she competed last year. She was the third runner up. And this coming weekend, she will do it again and go once again and try to win her place in Miss Teen USA. And so she's an incredible young leader. And we are so proud to be giving back to young women that are making a difference in their lives already at such a tender age. She's 17 years old. So let's give Olivia a warm applause. Look at that cover, right? And Olivia has some words for you, so we're going to go ahead and play her video. Hi, my name is Olivia Lamper, and I want to thank 2020 Vision for Success for helping sponsor me for the last two years on my quest for the crown. They've helped sponsor me from everything from my entry fee to getting my activewear and my dresses, as well as my makeup and my shoes and anything else that I'm going to need for that weekend. Without their help, I might not have been able to compete for the last two years because the pageant is a very rewarding experience, but it does take a lot of time and money, and so they've really helped lift the stress off my shoulders so I don't have to worry about the small stuff, and I can just focus on getting myself ready and knowing why I really want to win the crown. They've also been very helpful in sharing my story and my platform. My platform this year is Recovery Starts With You, which is to end the stigma around eating disorders and to help promote and support recovery for anyone who struggles with disordered eating or compulsive exercising. As someone who struggled with both of those things herself, I know how important that can be to get those stories out there. I wanted to thank them again for believing in me and just doing everything you could possibly do to help me for the last two years. And I'm very excited to be competing on June 12th. This is my third time competing and I feel extremely ready and I'm very excited. <laughs> Thank you again. All right. Well, I have the distinct honor of bringing up our keynote. And as Women with Vision has evolved, you are going to meet tonight our board of directors in just a few moments. But before that, I'm going to bring up an incredible powerhouse. i just tell a short story. I had the distinct honor of having Jonathan Tallinger sponsor a show when I was an anchor for Mortgage News Network. And that show would be the first uh, syndicated show called Power Women with Class for Class Valuation. And Jonathan and I got to meet each other unknown, and he took this leap into this. He has been an advocate. You will uh, get to see some fun stuff with Jonathan tomorrow. Um, but right now we have uh, Cindy Harris's cover uh, that he just sponsored as well, and he's just an incredible advocate. During the filming of that show, I got to meet 13 incredible American leaders, presidents and executives, CEOs of the best of the best of the best. And this woman and I met in New York City in a recording studio for this episode of uh, Power Woman, and that was Laura Braindeo, president of AFR. Please, I could not think of enough adjectives to properly tell you, but you're about to find out. Please help me welcome to the stage the magnificent Laura Braindeo.